please fasten your seat belts and put your seats in the fully upright and locked position. We're on a trip to Europe where we're going to learn about graphing linear equations. Now, I mean, you may want to pause this video now and download some graph paper from the mastermath.info site because you're going to need it. We're going to graph some equations. And our challenge is going to be, initially at least, to figure out how we can convert our dollars into euros so that we'll have euros to spend when we get to Europe. Through most of Europe, the euro is the currency that people use. And we found out before we left on this trip that a dollar is worth about 0.707 euros. In other words, if you went to the bank and gave him a dollar and told them to uh, turn it into euros for you, they'd only give you about 0.71 euros. Well, let's create a chart or a table that shows what different amounts of dollars are worth in euros. And the formula we're going to use is right there. One dollar equals 0.7. 7068 euros. So if we had $10 and we wanted to exchange it for euros, we'd have to multiply the left side, the $1 by 10, to get $10. And then the right side, the euro side, we'd also multiply that by 10, and we'd end up with 707 euros. If we had $20, we'd have to multiply the left and the right side by 20, and we'd end up with 14.14 euros and so forth. Well, could we graph this table? Could we make a graph that showed what the relationship of the dollar to the euro was? I think we probably could. Here's a graph. And we, what we'd want to do is find ten dollars on this graph. And I've got dollars going up and down the y-axis and I've got euros running uh, on the x-axis. So we go up to ten dollars. There's ten dollars right there. And then we go across to 707 which would be right about there. Up oh, right there. Alright then let's graph the second one. We've got twenty dollars equals fourteen point one four euros. So we go up to twenty dollars. There's twenty and then we go across to 1404. There's the 14, so it's going to be a little bit past there. So we got the 20 to the 14, and there's our point. And the third one is $30 and 20. $30 equals 21.2 euros. So we go up to $30, which is right there. And then we go over to about 21, right about there. And there's that dot. And there are the rest of the dots. We could convert dollars into euros at a rate that equals that line that runs on the graph. Well, there's not a line there, but I can put a line in there. And then we could see that if we had for 50 euros, excuse me, $50, we'd take that across the line and we'd then go down and it'd be worth about 36 euros. Well, what we just did was, gra was create a table and then graph the results of that table for the equation $1 equals 0.707 euros. Well, we could do that pr for pretty much any linear equation. I've got a linear equation up here now, y equals 3x plus 1. Do you think we could create a table for that? Well, sure we could. We just create a table and put in values of x and let's just pick nice easy ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we calculate what the value of y would be. And y equals 3x plus 1, so if x equaled 1, y would equal 3 times 1 plus 1, or 4. And if x equaled 2, y would equal 3 times 2, or 6, plus 1, so and a value of x corresponds to a value of 7 for y. And we could do that for any number in x and come up with a value for y. Well, now that we've got this table, could we graph it? I kind of think we could. All we do is find an x value. And there's an x value right there. And then we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and we put a dot there where the y value was. 
And that's our first point. And if we had an x value of 2, the y value would be 7. So we go out to 2, and then we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that would be our uh, second point. And if x equaled 3, the y value is 10. So we go out to 3, 1, 2, 3, and then we go up 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then after we had some points on this graph, we could draw a line that connected these points, and that would be kind of useful to us. Why would it be useful? Well, for instance, let's say you had a value of 2.5. That's right about there. x equals 2.5. What would y equal? Well, we'd go up until we hit the line, and we'd see that, that y equaled about 8.5. Well, now you try it. Create a table and then a graph for this linear equation, y equals x plus 2. Now, you're going to need some graph paper, so if, you, you, so if you've got some, just pull it out and get to work. If you don't have any, go to mastermath.info, and under Supplies, you'll see some graph paper. Download and print it, and you can use that for the following exercises. Be sure you hit your pause button because it's going to take you a while to get this done. Hit your pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. How'd you do? Did you get it? I hope so. Well, let's show you how I did it. The question is create a table and then graph this linear equation, y equals x plus 2. Well, the first thing we need to do is create a table. And I did that right here. I, I had an x value uh, column or row, and then I had a y value row. And then I put in values for x, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then I calculated what the y would be for each of those x values. For an x equals 1, I got y equals x, which is 1, plus 2, so y equals 3. For an x value of 2, I got y equals 2 plus 2, which is 4. For a y value of 3, I've got 3 plus 2, or 5, and so forth. Now, we need to graph this relationship. And I've created a graph that has x values 1 through 10, and y values 1 through 10. And then, for each x value, I find out where the corresponding y value is, and I put a dot there. So, my first one is 1 and 3, so I got to go out to 1, and then I go up 3, and I put a dot right there. And then, my second value is 2 and 4, so I go over 2, and up 4, and I put the, a dot there. And I do that for all the values I've got. And I end up with those five dots that you see there, one, two, three, four, five. And then I need to draw a line through them, right like that. And again, that line's going to be helpful, because let's say I had an x value of 7. What would my y be? Well, I could go back and calculate it, or I could just go to this graph and go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, until I hit the line, and I discover that a value of x of 7 had a corresponding y value of 9. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okay, they tell us that we start with $3 in savings, and then we plan to save an additional $1.50 each week. And we'll call each week W. W would be 1 after 1 week, it would be 2 after 2 weeks, and so forth. Write an equation that shows how much money you have each week. And we'll call that amount of money the T, or total amount of money. Next, graph the equation. All right, we're trying to figure out how much we've got, t, after each amount of time. So we'll say t equals. And we know 
that we started with three dollars so we're going to have three dollars in the very beginning but then we're going to add a dollar fifty each week so it's a dollar fifty times the number of weeks that have gone by the equation then is the total amount saved equals three dollars plus a dollar fifty times the number of weeks that have passed next we can create a table for that and I've created a table and in, in this row I put weeks in this row I put the total amount saved so after week one how much have we saved well the formula is the total equals three dollars plus one and a half times W or the week so if one were the weeks we'd have one and a half times one which is one and a half we'd add three to that and we come up with 450 after two weeks I've got a two there where the W is one and a half times two is three three plus three is six after three weeks I've got three times 150 which is 450 plus three is 750 and so forth now let's graph that again what I do is find my week which is one and my corresponding y value for for one is four and a half so I got to one and then I go up to four and a half and I put a dot there and for the second week I got two six so I got to two and then I go up six and I put a dot there third week three and seven and a half one two three and then up to seven and a half and so forth and then I need to draw a line through those points which I've done right here now if your line like my line isn't perfectly through the points don't worry about it we're not that precise I basically want you to understand the concept I hope you've learned a good deal about graphing linear equations and now it's time to test your skill go to mastermath.info and download the graphing linear equations worksheet test your skills on that and then after you finish that go back and take the online interactive quiz on graphing linear equations and let's find out just just exactly how much you learned come on back and see us real soon